Welcome to Beyond Belief. You know, there is no topic that really strikes home for me than the subject of extraterrestrials, artifacts on other planets and other systems. And we have a very special guest today, Billy Carson. Billy has been investigating for years now the possibility of anomalies throughout the solar system, perhaps on other planets outside the solar system as well. Billy, welcome to Beyond Belief. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You, many years ago, formed a very interesting organization. Tell us about that. Well, we're called the United Family of Anomaly Hunters, and it's a group of 14 of us that came together. We had already been researching official NASA and European Space Agency documents and images for many years separately. Uh, when I started getting involved with this group, I said, look, guys, we'll be better if we come together, coalesce mm -hmm. into one giant organization and then focus all of our energy into one place so that we can actually rub things off of each other, see, you know, get opinions whether this looks real or that looks fake or is this really there or not. Um, and it's people from all different genres and people from all around the world. Uh, we've really done a phenomenal job, I think, in coming together and exposing anomalies that are out there in space. You're like the United Nations of anomalies now. Absolutely. Brilliant idea. Thank you. And the contribution of all these people, mm -hmm. uh, have they enhanced what you do? Oh, absolutely, significantly. Because at first, it was just myself looking through mostly Mars images because there's a lot of data from Mars because we've sent the majority of the probes to Mars and rovers to Mars. Uh, but now when I started reaching out and tapping into people that were researching the, the moons of Jupiter, the moons of Saturn, yeah. uh, the, our moon itself, and uh, even Earth anomalies, uh, megalithic structures around the planet, I began to see a much bigger picture, and I started seeing how all these anomalies kind of tied together. They appeared to have the same architect. And Billy, when you talk about anomalies from images, are we talking about looking at pictures sent back to us? What are you looking at? We're looking at images that are sent back to us from uh, space probes and rovers that are on Mars, for example. All right. Also the Huygens probe, which went out to Saturn. So these images are official images from official sources from NASA, the European Space Agency, the Russian Space Agency, we even have images from there. Does NASA, for example, really understand what they're sending out to the public? I mean, how do you get this information? Well, it's publicly available because, fortunately for us, our taxes help fund this and pay for it. At first, they weren't releasing the images. Aha. Uh -huh. They were holding back. And then, I forget the name of the senator, but there was a senator that said, look, if you don't release these images, we're going to file suit. And then... We own them. We right? own them. Yeah. Other people came behind him, civilians, citizens of the world, and said, look, we want these images or we're going to file. So eventually, it became such a big problem. They said, okay, let's start releasing the images. So one day, they released like 500,000 at once. And then from there, it started coming in on a constant stream, images coming down. Very low quality compared to what I think they really have, but they have okay. been releasing the images. Clearly, though, they don't spell out what the images show. You have to look for that, You right? have to look for it. It's a very detailed process. I mean, literally getting out a real magnifying glass, bringing the image down into a photo program that you can actually analyze, taking away some of the haze, and really going almost centimeter by centimeter, looking for out-of-place objects. And that's the most important thing. We don't want to say it's this, and we don't want to say it's that. All we can say is that this particular object that we're looking at in this image doesn't appear to, to match the surrounding terrain. Okay. And that's what, we, what an anomaly is for us. And overall, what kind of anomalies are we talking about? We're talking about a lot of structural anom anomalies, mostly. Structural meaning that they appear to have walls, remnants of buildings. Uh, you can even see in some images what appear to be tops and roofs. Uh, wow. Doors. So pretty good size. Pretty good size. Some are super massive and some are small. We've seen some structures as high as three and four miles off of the surface of the planet. Oh my gosh. And we've seen some structures just a few inches off the surface of the planet. Uh, but they are truly interesting objects that have geometry and have what we would consider to be recognizable traits of things we would see on Earth. So when you look at these objects and these structures, mm -hmm. clearly you say to yourself, this cannot be made by Mother Nature. <laughs> right, that's the thing. And now, Mother Nature does have the capability of making geometric shapes or 90 degree angles in certain situations with crystals and, and different rock formations. Right. But what we're seeing is something totally different. And this is one of the main reasons why we decided to form to come together as a group so that we can actually bounce a lot of the information off of each other and say, okay, based on your technique of finding these anomalies, how does this look to you? Do you think this is a structure that may or may not be there? Uh, when, you know, people have different ways of analyzing the images, and it gives us a better idea collectively 
of whether to say, okay, to the public, this is one thing that we think is an anomaly. Very often we find things that turn out to be nothing. Nothing, of course. But we do find quite a few that have turned out to be real anomalies. Do you look at the small fossil records too? Or just primarily are you looking for structures? We do look at fossil records. Now, that's a very inter interesting uh, term you just used because a lot of the anomalies we discover on Mars appear to be bones, mm -hmm. not actual rocks. And there's one particular image in McMurdo Valley uh, that was taken by the Opportunity rover. And this particular entire little area, which about maybe 20 meters, has quite a few bones there. I mean, dozens and what appear to be bones. I can't say they're bones for sure, but it appear to be femurs and just little bits of bones all over the place. Very, very interesting. Any bones of what you would think to be humans or, you know, the, somebody that looks like us? One of Humanoids? the most famous or, uh, images that we've discovered is, uh, was by Martine Graney of one of our Anomaly Hunter one groups. One of your team members. Yes, uh, she runs Martian Genesis, and she actually has a very clear, and this made international news, picture of two humanoids laying together on the ground, kind of in an angle as if they were blown over and maybe have passed away or deceased right there on Mars right. with their garbs, their clothes on. You can see their fingers, their hand, the face, the eyes, the nose, even the eyelashes. Oh, my God. All there. And some of those, one of those. Huddled together? Huddled together and appear to have died right there in that spot. It's like some of the things we're hearing from Pompeii mm -hmm. after that uh, volcano exploded. Yep. Mount Absolutely. Vesuvius, yes. that some of the people were huddled together and died instantly when the yep. molted ash and everything else came down on them. Yes. It sounds like uh, very, similar. very similar. Very, very similar. There's obviously evidence of a major catastrophe on Mars. Geologically, that's, that's not without a doubt. I mean, everybody knows that now from, in science. Right. Uh, but this, you're absolutely right about Pompeii and maybe even uh, the Indus Valley in Mohenjo-Daro, where there's still bodies laying in the street holding hands, and uh, even the, uh, the animals won't scavenge them because the bodies are still radioactive. After looking at what you did on Mars, what have you concluded about what might have happened there? I concluded that there may be two situations on Mars. One appears to possibly be a major pole shift of the crust of the planet itself. And there obviously is a, the asteroid belt right outside of Mars. That asteroid belt appears to have been a supermassive planet in ancient times, super oh ancient, God. millions of years That's ago. That's dramatic. That might have exploded. And one side of that, I think that Mars originally was a moon of this planet, and one side of Mars is charred, and I think that was the side that took the explosion. And when that mass hit Mars, I think it shifted the crust of the planet itself. Instantly. Instantly, within minutes. That was a major catastrophe. Then I think millions of years later, it started to come back. But then I believe that there were wars on Mars. There seems to be a lot of evidence of destruction that may not be as geological as before in the past. Sounds familiar to where we've been and where we could go. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the most important things I think people need to understand is that a lot of the imagery coming back from Mars has red filters and white balancing put into them. And why? Are they doctored? They're doctored. There's no doubt about it. You can actually see, without using any type of technology, without using magnifying glasses, you can actually see parts of the images that are obfuscated purposefully because you see, the image starts out phenomenally clear, and you get to a part where you go, I think I see something there, all uh, of a sudden it's obfuscated. All right. It's blurred intentionally. Things are turned into to look like rocks, but they're not really rocks. And sometimes you can use, simply take the burn tool from uh, Photoshop and start rubbing it on there, and you start burning through that fake layer that they put on, you can see what's underneath it. Almost as if that we, NASA's telling people, I want you to alter these things. Yeah, I believe that they have a team of or probably even some very sophisticated software. Even on the rover uh, deck itself, when you read the, the technical specs, it has the capability of running software, balancing oh, out geez. what they call balancing out the images before they're even transmitted to the satellite and then back to Earth. And of course, they're transmitting, uh, well, they're showing the public very low quality images. Uh, the camera uh, is uh, supposedly a, a two megapixel camera, which is, I mean, that's extremely low. I mean, why would you send a $2.5 billion rover to a planet with a two megapixel camera? Right. We don't even use those here. No, our cell yeah. phones are 10 megapixels. <laughs> I mean, come on. At so, least. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I really believe that they have a much better camera. I don't think they're, that's the truth. And they're giving us two megapixel images sometimes, only sometimes. Most of the time, it's less than two megapixels. Jeez. And you have to really go in and really analyze these images very carefully. Uh, they do have a couple of different cameras on deck. They have the Mali. They have the two mass cam uh, cameras, but, and they also have something called a KAI 
2020, which takes a 7, uh, 720p HD video, which we've never seen any video. But they've got it. They've got the video. Yeah. So we'll Why are they a... holding back on us, Billy? Why don't well, they want us to say, look at what we've discovered. Uh -huh. There are structures on Mars. Yeah. There are artifacts there. Look at what we found. Why well, don't they do that? Because it's all about control and power. You see, once you tell people that there's a remnant of an ancient civilization on a planet and we found these remnants, now you have to share this information with the world. Right. And that means you've got to share whatever you discover, technology-wise. Uh, maybe they're really researching this war that appears to have happened uh, on this planet, and now all of a sudden, uh, it's a uh, security risk in their eyes. I think that they'd like to be way ahead of the game at all times, and they don't want anybody to know that there is something there that there maybe even could potentially be a threat to back to Earth from there, mm -hmm. or maybe that they're going there on a Christopher Columbus type of a excursion to really take over what's left. Um, you know, it's just a very strange situation. Uh, and I think that they really are looking to cover up and will only give out tiny bits of disclosure over a very long period of time. Somebody, Billy, somewhere within agencies has seen these incredible images mm -hmm. and has seen the images we don't get to see, mm -hmm. images that even you don't get to see yep. because of the deterioration of the pictures. Absolutely. When do they go public? When does somebody like that to say, decide to say, I'm going to Billy Carson <laughs> and I'm telling him everything? Is I that, that going to happen? It might happen, but the biggest problem you have is our, the NASA scientists that are dying. Uh, in the last 10 years, over 200 NASA scientists are dead. What do you mean, dead? Uh, gone. Off strangely? Just, strangely. Car accidents, uh, ski, ski slope accidents. Um, 200? 200. It's, it's a really big list. It's a human, and every single one you read of, you're going, you know, drove off the side of a mountain. I mean, this you're hearing, is bizarre. You have so many of these NASA scientists literally just dying. It's, uh, it's kind of horrifying, and I think that the people who may want to come out are afraid to, uh, you know, to, to die. Now, a conspiracy expert would say that they are being killed off mm -hmm. for some reason. Absolutely. If that's true. If it's true. What's that reason? The reason would be not to get this information out to the public because they have their own timed level of disclosure that they want to put out. They just released, okay, the first they were saying that Mars was a cold, dead place. Then they came out a few years ago and said, oh, the, it the has oceans. The temperature at the equator oceans. is 90 degrees at the equator. Now it has water and lakes and potentially small oceans or small seas, I would say. They show a picture of mountains on Mars with water coming out of the mountain on TV. It's amazing. Yeah. Over many more years, they'll get to small insects and then maybe into mammals. Meanwhile, Elon Musk and his crew will be there, and they'll be the Christopher Columbus, like they're mm -hmm. the first explorers discovering things. Will they hold back? Uh, no, they'll, they'll go, in, but, but I think that they're, they're the front for something even bigger. Do you think they're going to tell us, though? Uh, I think, no, I don't think they're going to tell us. They I don't think they're going to tell us the truth. I think everything has been signed and agreed upon. And what's amazing, when you look at a lot of these images from Mars, you actually can see what appear to be algae and different types of small plant life. You don't see any massive trees or anything like that until you get to the North and South Pole. There are actual images of pine, what appear to be pine trees. Now, we could be, could be an illusion, but they appear to be Trees, but, but they don't look like rock formations. They don't look do like that. rock formations at all, and they appear to be uh, snow, you know, snow all around them at the base, and then uh, trees that are standing up off the surface of the planet and alive, near, with nearby still lakes. alive or still petrified. Alive. No, still alive. These are appear to be very alive. Wow. At the North and South Pole. What if there are critters running around the planet? I believe that there actually are. My right. personal opinion, some of the things that I've seen appear to be like rodents and things like little that. Little rodents. That, uh, and the reason why I think that they appear to be alive is because based on where the, the, the camera from the mass cam from the rover is looking to take a, that picture, the object, the anomaly, appears to be looking back at the camera. So if it was a statue or something like that, why would it be looking at the camera? And this happens many times. You see these anomalies that appear to be biological organisms always looking directly at the camera, even whether they're bent in an angle and turning to look, but they're looking at the camera. And I think that's really bizarre. Billy, Mars and Earth, they're very similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, formed at the same time, the same complexity. They had water, they had oceans, temperatures were about the same. There's no question in my mind that life on Earth and life on Mars may be very similar. Mm -hmm. Did Mars have a civilization much like Earth did? I really believe that it did, and the reason why is because when you go into some of the ancient texts, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, some of the Indian Vedas, and also the Sumerian tablets, you discover that they had apparently 
uh, where Atlantis was like an, an interplanetary civilization. They would travel from Earth to Mars. People were on Mars, uh, and according to the, even the Anunnaki epic, there were people on Mars called the Ejiji mm -hmm. that were actually mining Mars for resources, and they would uh, then take those resources back to their home planet, wherever that may be. But, but there was a communication back and forth, and even in some of the cylinder scrolls, it shows Earth and Mars with this... Uh, winged disc with a with a funny emblem on it, yes. and it appears to be that might have been even the communication piece between the two planets. Uh, maybe that was the Black Knight satellite, which is still hover hovering above our heads right now. But nevertheless, I believe from these ancient texts, they described these trips there and that these people were there and we were here. And a few whistleblowers have come forward and said that uh, the people on Mars looked like the ancient Egyptians. Who came first, uh, Martians or Earthlings? I think that the Earthlings came first. And then later, because in the, in the epic of the Anunnaki, when you read that information about the tablets, when they, the Ejiji were fed up with working in slave labor on, on Mars, mm -hmm. they actually came to Earth and took some females to take back to Mars with them because they even had no females there. So I think they took some Earth humans back, which may be the reference in Genesis 6, where they came here and took those women and uh, made, them, made them into their wives and took them back to Mars. That could be. Yeah. That could be. The interpretation of Genesis, mm -hmm. if you look at it toward an extraterrestrial presence, Correct. makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. The angels could have been ETs, for example. I believe the so. The Nephilim, those mm -hmm. that came down here. Yeah. And as you say, they may have taken Earth women mm -hmm. and taken them off the planet. So they must have looked pretty similar to what we look. I think that we look like them. Uh, according to what I've studied so far in research and a lot of the lectures that I've been to, and I've discovered that it appears that... Uh, Somehow, at some point in time, the already evolving hominid on this planet was genetically modified to a certain point to come to a certain level of, uh, I hate to say it, but, you know, become a slave, a genetic slave to these, uh, to these beings. The, the theory of Zachariah Sitchin. Right, Zachariah Sitchin, and even now other many uh, researchers that have come out and uh, kind of really discovered the same information. Uh, it's almost as if the human race, unfortunately, was designed to become a slave race. But I believe that... Um, uh, in the very, very beginning, that was the whole purpose of it. What happened to Mars, Billy? What happened? Well, you know, they call it the god of war for a reason. Um, and I really do believe that they found a lot of traces of nuclear war in the sand there. Oh, this boy. Is, this has come forward by a few scientists now. And uh, you can even find it in the radio spectrometry from uh, satellites and so forth that it appears to have been a war or something would, that would give off this nuclear signature. And I'm thinking that they're calling this place the god of war for a specific reason, that there really was an interplanetary war. In some of the ancient texts, it talks about a pyramid war that was going on between these Anunnaki. And it wasn't just on Earth. It was between Earth, the moon, and Mars. And I believe that Mars got the worst of the whole thing. Mars and our moon got the worst of it, I believe. What Venus, do you think the planet of Venus might sustain? Venus is absolutely amazing. Uh, the Magellan mission uh, to Venus mm -hmm. in the 1980s sent back some incredible old radar Old technology, images. too. Old technology. Old technology that sent back, because they used radar because they wanted to penetrate the thick clouds. And what we got back is absolutely astonishing. Uh, the images show the surface structures on Venus, and you can literally see cities there. You can Whoa. see, it's as if you were in a plane that was 70, 80,000 feet up. Old and you were cities down. or current cities? I can't say that, they look, that they're old because I don't see destruction. Now, I could be wrong, but what I see um, is intact cities. In because words, if they were old, they would crumble just from uh, Yeah, you would see, erosion. You would see on a third of a building, a quarter of a building. You know, you wouldn't see tops of roofs. Mm -hmm. But from that angle, from the radar imagery, which mapped the entire planet, you see cities everywhere, and you see tops, which is very bizarre. Because when you go to Mars and you look at the imagery, you see one-third high structures, two-third high structures, quarter high structures, but you don't see any tops. Very few tops Interesting. in most of the images. And you see a lot of flood damage. What do these Venus, cities look like? They actually look like modern-day cities you would just see uh, here on Earth. Skyscrapers? Uh, New York. Uh, yeah, skyscrapers. Really? Tall wow. buildings. Um, uh, bays. It's a very... Listen, it's amazing. And people go, well, it's impossible to have something on Venus. Well, a lot of people don't know that the Venera mission went to Venus that 16 landed times. There, right? Landed there. 16 times. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, NASA says it's so hot, it's scolding heat, thousands of degrees, nothing can survive it. Well, how can you land with a parachute, a fabric parachute, 16 times on Venus? And it functions when it hits. Thank you. It functions. Yeah. And not only that, I think it was Venera 14 that sent back an image of what looked like a land crab on the surface. And when one image is here, next image it moves, another image is it's here, and then the fourth image, it's gone. 
And uh, the explanation that we got back from NASA was that they think a lens cap fell off of the, <laughs> off of the lander. But people don't know that there's uh, le you know, 16 missions to Venus already. Let's pop back to Mars for uh, uh, something happened to their atmosphere. Yeah. It, they had it, mm -hmm. it was gone. What do you think happened? I think that uh, in the last war uh, that they really bombed that planet significantly. And I think one of those bombs created such a hole in the atmosphere that it let a lot of the gases escape and maybe even rocked the crust, which may have already been unstable. It may have hit, uh, right. uh, you but know, it went hit, fast. It went very fast. Hit it in a way which had another shift. Tom Van, Van yeah. Flander, he stated that he thought there were two shifts of the crust of, of Mars. And I came to the same conclusion just based on all the history. And this more recent war seems to have maybe given it its second crustal shift, uh, pole shift of the crust itself, which would have caused the mountains to, to, to collapse into the oceans, and then the oceans would have over flooded the land and the atmosphere would have definitely fled the, fled the planet. Had one piece of evidence on Mars that you could show to people and say, look at what I've been trying to tell you. The man and the woman collapsed, crouched together, apparently passed away in that spot from whatever tragedy occurred at that moment to take them down is one of the most heartbreaking pieces of evidence I've ever seen. Are they about our size? They're smaller. They're much smaller. They're, they come up probably to our waist. And do they look humanoid or they do look, they look like the alien greys? They look humanoid. You know, a very, if they were here, you would think that they were just um, dwarf humans. Just little people. Yeah. Maybe we'll get that answer one day, Billy. I hope so. I really do. And where do people get information on what you do? You can go to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. With a four. With the number four. The number you can four. also go to Forbidden Knowledge on Instagram. It's one of my larger accounts uh, with the number four. Billy, thanks for being on Beyond Belief. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Isn't it amazing? We have an individual and a group of people who look at images from planetary systems like Mars, and they are actually seeing artifacts from prior civilizations. It is truly remarkable. And you get to see that on Beyond Belief. Thanks for watching. We need to give people the information.